हेलो एवरीवन वेलकम टू योर फेवरेट डिजिटल मार्केटिंग पॉडकास्ट द डिजिटल मार्केटिंग ज्ञान वेयर वी कीप ऑन शेयरिंग सम ऑफ द इंफॉर्मेटिव टूल्स टेक्निक्स केस स्टडीज एंड लेटेस्ट अपडेट्स इन द डिजिटल मार्केटिंग डोमेन आई एम योर होस्ट प्रिंस कुमार एंड वी हैव वेंडी पीस द ओनर एंड प्रेसिडेंट ऑफ रैपॉट इंटरनेशनल with us today Wendy the owner along with that a Metro West Boston translation and interpretational service company specializing in marketing legal medical life sciences translation throughout her career she has worked with hundreds of companies to help them communicate across more than 200 languages and cultures her expertise in international relations grew from working in several international and global marketing roles and spending years living abroad Wendy is a frequent speaker trainer advisor and an avid word traveler Hi Wendy excited to have you on our show and learn the crux of global marketing with you Hi Prince thank you so much for having me here it's a topic that I'm very passionate about and love talking about So uh, to start with we will love to know about your corporate journey so far Oh so um I've been owner of Rapport International for 17 years um and we have grown tremendously because of our focus on high quality and before that uh i worked in corporate marketing roles and um i've been in sales business development and marketing i owned a company before um early in my 20s and then i closed it up and i went back to get my mba and then came out and did um m- more marketing roles and sales before that so I love growing businesses and organizations and communications and I'm really passionate about the opportunities that companies have for for selling internationally. Amazing, amazing. So since you have been an avid traveler, so what all countries have you visited? Well, I have been to India. I uh, okay. we went to Chennai on a people to people tour and I loved being in India. We had lots of friendly people and fantastic food. Um I've also been to a lot of European countries. Uh I I, I guess a lot of them. Amazing. France, Germany, Spain. I haven't been to Portugal yet, so I need to get there. Um let me see. I've been to Taiwan. I've been to Mexico. uh i've been to costa rica um belize <laughs> so yeah there's more but <laughs> but india was a highlight i certainly loved india <laughs> so you have recently authored a book called the language of global marketing can you please yes. give a glimpse of what this book is all about i um have worked with hundreds of companies to help them market internationally and a lot of the same questions kept coming up um you know like how do i get started and what do i need to translate and who can do this and isn't english the global language uh and so there's all in the mistakes we've heard about so many translation mistakes and whether machine translation is going to take over and there's all sorts of fun stories of successes and then ones that you grimace at um because people made mistakes and there are all ways to avoid making the mistakes and do it right and companies that export are more profitable they have higher revenues they pay higher salaries they have higher valuations um and they're stronger companies because if an economy is down in one country it's up in another country and so if you spread the risk that way you do much better and a lot of countries have supports from the government to help companies export because it helps their balance of trade and so i wrote the book of really explaining to people a road map how do you start thinking about it how do you decide what markets to go into how do you avoid the mistakes how do you get answers to all these questions 
Um, and then I wove in a lot of stories, personal personal stories, stories about clients that you know they authorized me to put in, stories uh, about mistakes that we've heard about. Um, and so we've gotten good feedback um, about the book is, is, you know, if I want to get started or I want to get better at doing this, this gives suggestions. And I even found out that there's a professor in Canada that just started using it. So it just published this year. So I'm hoping it's helpful. Definitely, this book is something which uh, if anyone wants to go into the global marketing, wants to take their business to the global marketing, then definitely they should be uh, reading this book. And it's uh, it's available on Amazon, so it's Perfect. easy to get. Definitely, we'll be sharing uh -huh. the link of uh, the link of the book so that if anyone is interested, they can definitely have a look on that. Oh, thank you, thank you. Since you have mentioned that uh, this book is all about the global marketing and event, that's all our topic of today. So, why do you think that businesses should focus on global marketing? rather than limiting themselves to local or, uh, you know, let's say nearby countries. Well, like I said, the companies that export are stronger companies and they grow faster and they, they balance off uh, risky situations. So, you know, if you take the time to build relationships and develop a strategy, you're putting your company in a much better position. Um, and plus, you know, when the, we can travel again, it gives you the opportunity to go different places around the world. Um, so I think it's a, a huge opportunity that people don't understand. And plus the other thing is, is if you take your time to build good marketing in your local market, it's really easy to do because you just have to replicate that in another language and culture. So it's not like you're recreating marketing all over. You just, you take the content that, that you're using, you're taking what's working on your website, and then you're adapting it. And if you hire a good translation agency that specializes in marketing translation, like us, <laughs> for example, you know, the, the translators are going to work with you to, to adapt it in, in part of the process. So sometimes you don't even need to travel. You can do it all on the internet and just bring in additional uh, business. And, you know, like in our, our, I host a podcast about global marketing and we put it out there. It's all in English. It's on the, the podcast hosting sites. And we've already seen that it's been downloaded in 40 different countries. We weren't even aiming at some of the countries. You know, we haven't been publicizing it at all. We're just putting it out there on the podcast sites. So whether you want to be found or not, you are. So you might as well add some language on there. Um, and research shows that people, even if they're bilingual, want content in their native language. And they're, uh, over half of them are willing to pay more money if they can read your materials in their native language. So the opportunity is huge right now. Definitely, definitely. This will be very interesting. Mm -hmm. So now, uh, since most of the businesses, they feel a lot of challenge while uh, you know expanding globally. So what are all the challenges that uh, you have came across or what businesses discuss with you that these are the major challenges they face uh, while they are planning to expand their business globally? I think one of the biggest challenges is just where to start. You know, it's companies kind of go, well, yeah, there's there's so many markets. And here in the US, a lot of people will start by going to Canada because it's very close or going to Mexico if they're down in the southern United States. Um, other people will say, well, you know, England speaks English, so we'll go there or Australia. Um, but they're not stepping back to do a real strategic study of what are the best markets. Um, and if you look at strategic markets is, you know, a lot of people from the US go into Canada or they go into England and that's where everybody's going. So the competition is going to be higher. Um, and I think another thing to think about is whether you start at a small country so you can figure out your process of how to do it, 
or do you go into a, a larger one? Um, other mistakes that I've heard is um, using your distributor to do translation. Um, I, on one of the podcasts, I talked to somebody who worked with a lot of distributors and he saw so many companies doing this and the distributors made a mistake on translation and it just set them back so far in entering a new market. Um, another mistake I see is using the Google Translate plugin on the website. It just, it's not good translation. So people come to your site and then they leave because they say, I don't understand this. Um, I think figuring out how you're, well, right now the global supply chain is a huge problem. I mean, there's, there's things stuck in ports. So making sure that you have good providers are thinking creatively about what ports you're going to use. So you don't go into the big ones, you go into smaller ones. I've heard, um, that's worked well for companies. Um, and then, uh, figuring out payments, um, but there's so many online payments, it's just figuring out the right one to use. To use. But after, you know, once you, f you take the time to figure this out, build good relationships, um, then, then you can supercharge it and really increase it. So definitely these are some of the major challenges that uh, most of them face. Right. So now coming to the digital marketing front. So if any brand wants to expand their business globally, so what should be the ideal digital marketing strategy that you would advise? So for e-commerce in particular, I think uh, leveraging your internet is really important or w whatever online platforms that you're going on. So I, I kind of see that there's, so, so let's say you're doing e-commerce direct and you're selling through your website. There are three different ways to look at it. Is one, you can go all in. You can say, I'm gonna translate my whole website and um, we're gonna make sure everything is really optimized across each language that you do. The next way is to do a microsite. Um, and this might be if you're, if you're only selling certain products in a country or you wanna sell your best selling products, start out smaller. So you can build a microsite and not do your whole website. And then the third way to do it is just to do a landing page. And I uh, see a lot of business to business services companies do this um, because they have a full sales cycle. It's not really e-commerce but it's an option that you could do for e-commerce by just putting a few products on there and testing to see what you get. So that's the first thing is just to look at your website and how are you gonna set that up? The second thing to think about is um, if you're selling products, you have to meet the requirements of labeling and packaging. So make sure your packaging is, is translated and your user information is translated um, and anything that the consumer is gonna have because uh, additional research shows that if a consumer goes all the way through the buying process, but then the post sales materials aren't translated, they're not gonna come back and buy or they're not gonna refer their friends. So, you know, talking to experienced marketers, you map out your buyer's journey and you look at all the points where the customer is looking for information and then you make sure you have something translated into each of those points so your customer feels welcome coming in to talk to you. Definitely, definitely. Understanding the customer journey is very important, especially when you are entering into a new market. To understand that how the audience respond to your product or to your services and then we can pitch up on you. Yes. Yes. And you don't, and you know, if you're starting a new market, you don't need to translate all the material that you have in your buyer's journey because you already have metrics of what material is most uh, helpful or used or clicked or downloaded. And so that's where you'd start. Take the information that consumers are, or your, your buyers are already looking at and then translate that and you can grow from there. Because that's another thing, if you do all your translation at once, you know, that's good to get information out, 
but any of the search engines are looking for additional content to be translated in language and that helps drive drive uh, people being able to find you. Yeah, so also in this point, I just want to ask that, uh, let's say English is a kind of global language which I mean Google and most other search engines, they understand it. Right? But what about the regional language? Like if someone is going in, let's say, you know, uh, going in, let's say, North Korea, or it might be in India where it's Hindi and these all things. So how one can optimize their website so that they are visible if someone is looking for in the local language? Okay, so yeah, re really good question. Okay, so when you set up your original website, you go through and you, you look at the, the journey, you know, what's the pathway you're trying to bring somebody through. So that's probably going to be the same. Then you take your list of keywords and you say, we want to optimize these pages for these keywords. Now those keywords you want to give to, you want to call out for the translator and say, these are our keywords. And the translator can give you the different keywords or key phrases, the search terms that are most popular in, the, in that language, because the, it, it may be slightly different than it is in the uh, original language. So you want to make sure that the translator is doing, it's not a word for word translation, but they're also thinking what's the, what is the user's behavior in searching for that. Then when you write your content, you make sure you're consistent with using that translated keyword throughout uh, your website. So the search engines are picking it up in whatever, you know, in the Chinese language that you're translating into or Hindi. Um, then you also want to think about, you know, your all the direction, navigation, back end stuff. So you've got your URLs and you've got your um, page descriptions, all that stuff that's not going to come up. But you want to make sure that they're all translated and using the keywords so it can help drive the traffic in for that language. Got it. So uh, the marketing communications, it also differs from one country to another. So can you share your experience on how to plan for the marketing communications, whether it might be the online or the offline? Yes, there in, so we, I've been talking about translation, which is, is general written word from one language to another. And so if you break that down in the industry, we have something called localization and globalization. Now, globalization is using one good, one good translation that can connect with anyone around the world. So, for example, if you translate into Spanish, there's lots of countries that speak Spanish. Um, and if you want to use only one translation, that would be globalization. And it might be good for things like uh, technical products because you know, if somebody's an engineer and they're specifying a certain, you know, fan that has to go into something, they're probably, the Spanish is probably going to be fine in that language. What is the name of the game in India? Kabati? Kabati, yeah. Kabati? Yeah. Okay. So if somebody used, is marketing in India and is talking about Kabati, we don't have a game like that in the United States. And so that culturally would just not work um, in the United States. So at that point, you'd have to do of a more localized translation where whatever you're talking about with the sport, you'd pick a sport in the United States, like, I don't know, American football. You don't really play that over in India, right? So maybe you'd, you'd you'd switch the sport out so it would make more sense. Um, and then you have to think about your images and visuals. If you're playing kabati with a bunch of people that are from, you know, you're showing people play kabati, but it's a bunch of people from Norway and you're trying to advertise in India, that doesn't make sense because it's just, it's going to feel off to people from India looking at tall blonde people playing the game. You want to have people that look like your target audience in the pictures. Um, and then you have to think about colors and references. Um, 
you know, like here in Boston, we might talk about Fenway Park, which is where uh, baseball is played in Boston. But, you know, what's a, a famous Kabati Stadium in India? Yeah, so that would be more localization is you could put a local stadium in to make people feel very familiar. And so you need to do that with a, a lot of consumer products. Um, yet, the, it, but it's not as clear to use industrial products with globalization and consumer products with localization because there's a, you know, this is a good example of a consumer product. There's a rain jacket that you, that's specially made for riding a bike. And the jacket comes down over the rear tire so you don't get that black line up your back when you're riding a bike. And so that has a very global message. Bike riders around the world <laughs> struggle with the same problem. So that could easily be a globalized translation. Okay. So it, it takes a little bit of thought. Then the second part of the question that I think you asked is um, also how do you connect with people? If you have customer service and you need to talk to people, you can't do, you may not be able to do it all through your website. If you can do it through your website, it's to your advantage because you do one translation and take them through the buyer's journey. But if you have to talk to people and you don't speak their language, there's something called telephone interpreting where you can dial in and get a tele a, an interpreter on the line that can help facilitate the conversation. So you don't have to hire people. You can get them on the telephone. You can get them on a Zoom call. You can get have a video interpreter or you can have a, a live in-person interpreter. So there are many, many, many ways to handle global communications without hiring lots of people that speak different languages. Definitely. So since you have been working with a lot of good brands, can you share any case study of how any business planned and then approached and now they are among uh, the, you know, they have spot in the global market. So if you can share any case sure. study. Yes, I'll talk about a company that um, does high-end research about what people are buying. So a lot of electronics manufacturers like to look at buying purchases so they can decide what they're going to uh, manufacture and sell. So this company um, is selling a lot of the high-end research in the United States but they were watching their metrics as to who was visiting on their website. And they could see a lot of people from China were coming in and they were interested, but they didn't stay. And occasionally they'd get emails in Chinese. And so he originally called me up and said, I would like to be able to understand what the emails in Chinese say and then be able to respond to them. How much would it cost to translate the emails? Well, that gets pretty expensive because you have lots of emails coming in and out and you want it really fast. And Google Translate's not good enough if you're trying to sell a high-end service. Yeah. So when I talked to him about it, I said, okay, what types of questions are you getting? And there's a wonderful book called uh, They Ask, You Answer by Marcus Sheridan. And he talks about the top five questions that people want to know. They want to know, how do I solve my problem? How much does it cost? Reviews about your company, who are competitors? And um, what are other things that I should anticipate? You know, what are problems I could run into? And so when I talked to this business owner about that, he could identify the questions. We made sure that it answered the top five questions. He wrote the questions up and the answers and he translated a landing page. And so he could tell visitors from China what services he offered. He answered the questions and then they could buy online. So it, it just, opened the door because he happened to be paying attention to what who was already coming in and then he made it easy for them to buy and when they bought the research 
um, they could they could read it and understand it, and so they could figure out how to to uh, get better at manufacturing products that would sell. Definitely, definitely. Very interesting case study you have shared about that. Keeping the localization to the level that uh, it becomes easy for any uh, audience of any of our audience to understand and to buy the product. Yes. So, yes. any last piece of advice to the brands who wants to market their business or who want to take their business to the global level? Yes, I would say, uh, you know, first contact uh, the embassy in the countries that you're, well, first you can go to the Indian government and see if there's any supports for companies that want to export. I know there are in a lot of countries, I just don't happen to know specifically in India. Second is reach out to um, the embassies in the countries that you want to go to or look at soft land partners. Um, it's like a soft landing, you know, if you want to go to another country and they're global and it's filled with people that have international connections to help you reach out. So that's a wonderful place to go meet other people that are doing international business. The third is, is you can go to our website, which is rapporttranslations.com. And if you look for the Learning Center, almost any question that you have, um, we've answered about translation, global marketing. Um, and if we haven't answered it, then please let us know and we'll write a blog about it. <laughs> and um, you can get the book if you want to read more about that. That's on Amazon, The Language of Global Marketing. And if you are, like to listen to podcasts, you can look for The Global Marketing Show. Um, so there's tons of places to go get information. And certainly don't be afraid about leaving your country because the payoff is really, really good. Definitely. Thank you for these valuable advices that you have given to our audience. So, with this, we have come to the end of today's episode. It was one of the most informative discussions I have had in the recent past. Thank you, Wendy, for sharing your thoughts on how to plan business global marketing strategy. It was a pleasure having you on our show and looking forward to hosting you again.